Welcome to On Table, How to Play series. Currently, you are watching the board version of MOBA like video game. It's Champions of Nexum. In a moment, you will see how to set up this game. I will also tell you about the rules and I'll show you the elements of this game close up. Firstly, players are divided into two teams and choose their family or castle. Red color is represented by the Ragnar's family, and blue is the line of Andons. Then the first team, out of 10 available characters in the game, choose their heroes, who will participate in the game. In addition to the champion's figure that will appear on the board, each player takes their character card. Each player controls minimum one character. Depending on the number of players, up to six characters may appear on the board. In a two-player game, the recommended number of heroes is four, which means two for each player. After the first team has chosen the heroes, it's time for the second team to choose from the remaining ones. It's the second team that will start the game. When the champion of the starting team finishes their actions, it's time for the champion of the opposing team. The heroes alternate their actions during rounds the entire game. The champion's figurines selected by teams are placed in castles, where they will start the adventure. Then, on designated places on the board, we place towers. We also set them in designated places on the trackway. The last line of defense are garrison's figures that we place in front of the castle. We place the markers of both teams on the first field of the victory track. We will then move them every time players destroy the tower. We place the time marker on the time track. It will move one space forward each round. On the side of the board, within each player's reach, we place four different decks of cards. We shuffle all the decks separately, including the artifacts deck. Place three item cards of artifacts deck on designated places on the board. During the game, players will develop their characters using these cards. Next is the spell cards deck. And also jungle cards deck. And trackway cards deck. We will draw cards from the last two decks during exploration of jungle or the trackway. Within the range of each player, we set colorful crystals corresponding to the colors of the locations on the board. Also transparent crystals, which are energy tokens, the currency in this game. Beside the board, we will also find some life tokens, larger ones which are equivalent of five points and smaller ones that represent one point of the hero's life. All players also have access to attack and defense dice, and two test dice. Each team receives their own task deck and reveals the top one. It will determine what tasks players have to complete. On each card, we will find a main task, which is completed when we obtain a crystal in a given color and deliver it to the appropriate field. For completing such task, we can destroy one opposing team tower. After completing both parts of the main task, the team chooses an item card or a spell for each champion as a reward. On the task card, there is also a side quest that we can perform as long as we didn't complete the main task. When the team has completed the entire main task, i.e. destroyed two opponents' towers, we discard the task card and draw a new one. Throughout the game, we can complete up to three quest cards and remove all six enemy towers. Each time we remove the tower, we move our marker on the victory track. The place where the marker is located 
shows the level of defense of the opponent's castle. So during the attack on the castle in this setting, we must roll 10 or more on the test dice to destroy it. So the more enemy towers we remove, the easier it will be to destroy the enemy's castle. That is the purpose of the game. With the board prepared and all elements set, we can start the game. On the first round, first monsters appear in the designated places on the board. Those are rats, which figures are placed on the jungle field. To beat rats, we have to roll the value of two or higher, and we get an energy crystal. If we fail, the champion loses one life point. Another monster are crabs. For killing a crab, the hero receives a crystal in the color of the field where the monster was located. To do this, we have to roll three or more on the test dice, and if we fail, the crab will deal two injuries. On the third round, hellish birds appear on the board. They can deal three hit points to a hero. For defeating them, the champion receives a spell card. Next are boars, which are killed with a roll of five or more. Failure costs us three life points, but for defeating them, the character can choose the item card. We choose it from three face-up cards on the board, or draw a random card from the deck. We can discard the item card and use the action written on it. We may also the card permanently. Each equipment card increases character standard statistics. In the fifth round, manticores appear, which defend themselves with strength of four. To kill them, the rolled dice must have value of at least six points. As a reward, we may move the opponent's character to any place on the board. With rounds passing by, more and more powerful monsters appear on the board. Next are trolls. We are able to kill them by rolling seven or higher. The risk of losing is five life points, but as a reward, we can turn a garrison figure into a stronger troll. An opponent who attacks our castle must roll a score of at least seven to kill the troll which is one more than during a fight with ordinary garrisons. As the last ones appear, two strongest monsters, Behemoth and the Crystal Dragon. To defeat Behemoth, we must roll eight or higher. We must remember that he deals damage of six life points if we fail the roll. The reward is to remove the opponent's tower and the hero who fought this monster chooses between equipment or a spell card. In the last round, together with Behemoth, Crystal Dragon appears on the board. Beating the dragon is possible only with a roll of 12 or higher, so we have to use two test dice. This means that during the hunt on the field with Dragon, there has to be a minimum of two champions. When an attack fails, the attacker suffers eight damage. But as a reward, the winning team destroys two towers of opposing team. And each hero from the winning team chooses an item card or a spell card. In each round besides new monsters appearing on the board, champions will gain special abilities. In the case of the first and sixth rounds, this is an additional free move. Normally, the hero can move up to two spaces connected with each other by a path. We have to pay for the next move with an action crystal. And in the first and sixth round, we have an additional one for free. In the next round, the heroes rolling the test dice in the jungle can add one point to the roll. In the third round, hero strength increases. This means that we can add one additional attack die to a roll. In the fifth round, each hero hunting monsters in the jungle 
increases the score of the roll by one. In the final round, all champions rolling the test dice adds one to the score. This applies to every situation, which requires a test roll. When the time token travels full circle, we start the circle anew. In subsequent rounds, already killed monsters will come back on the board, and those with which we have not fought before remain unchanged. Before completing the action, each hero must decide whether he or she is in the exploration phase or the offensive phase. During exploration, the hero can move, hunt a monster, by spending four action points, they can buy a spell card. When allies stand in the same field, they can exchange any number of crystals. The champion may complete the task. The character can also search, depending on where they are, they choose the jungle card or the trackway card. In the exploration phase, players can storm the opponent's castle, but to do this, we must remove at least one garrison before. All actions are performed by players in any order. The offensive phase consists of action of a duel between heroes, siege or attack on the garrison. During the offensive phase, we cannot explore the area, perform tasks, nor can we storm the castle. When the champion fights the monster and when attacking the garrison or the castle, we roll the test dice. Depending on the result, we check the effect. At that moment, the garrison would be defeated because its defense is six and I've rolled eight on the dice. The action of the duel in this game or the fight between champions looks a bit different. We roll the attack and defense dice instead of the test dice. At this point, the statistics of each hero are very important, as well as their active and passive ability. Champion can use passive ability all the time, and for the active abilities, they have to pay and use it at the right moment, for example, once per turn. On each of hero's or heroine's card, we find the basic statistics. These are the strength of the attack, the amount of inflicted damage, the defense value, and the number of live points. The attacking hero roll the number of attack dice represented on their character card. After the roll, we check the effects. The defending character rolls the number of defense dice that is shown by their statistics. Now the attacking player declares whether they will re-roll their score. If they have energy crystals, they can pay one for each dice they wish to re-roll. After this declaration, the defending player also declares whether they will re-roll their dice, also paying with their crystals. There are five different symbols on both the attack and defense dice. The least desired symbol is a miss, meaning an unsuccessful attack. To win the duel, we have to get as many successes as possible. When we roll the damage symbol on the dice after a successful attack, it increases the standard damage shown in character statistics. The energy point symbol allows the player to retrieve the action crystal if our attack or defense was effective. If the attacking player does not decide to re-roll the two miss symbols, they will lose the clash because they have only scored one success. A defending player has three successes in total, which means that they defended themselves. On their other two dice, there are symbols of energy points. Thanks to these, they can obtain additional two energy crystals. If the attacker wins the duel, beside dealing the damage, they can take any crystal from the defeated hero. If there is more than one hero on the same field, the attacking champion takes one additional attack dice for each ally standing in this place. What happens when a character loses all of their life points? 
their character automatically moves to their castle. They lose one round. After such rest, they regain full life and return to the game. Heroes can heal in the castle and in the inn. There, for every energy crystal spent, they must restore one life point. Heroes in the Champions of Nexium are different in the way they look and in the way they are played. They have different statistics and abilities. Each of the heroes is different. There are also quite cunning and strong women here. What can happen on this board depends on your imagination and determination. One thing is for sure, this game can be enjoyed by enthusiasts of MOBA games. They will be finding a lot of similarities here, as well as the tabletop gamers at different levels of advancement. I hope that I encourage you to play this game. More about this game soon.